Hello everyone and welcome to this January workshop where I'm going to show you how to make this gorgeous blooming quince branch out of crepe paper. So just as a little history of this quince branch, this one right here, uh, the this, this smaller one has actually been sitting um, on my table, my entryway table for a few years. This was one of our favorite uh, flowers that we made in our Crepe Paper Flower Masterclass Volume 1. Now we've somewhat retired that masterclass. We, we are going to release it limited, but we've, we're also on to Masterclass number two, which I'm going to show you guys a peek. If you're not in the Masterclass, you want to see this. We're learning how to make all of these flowers. They're so beautiful. So we're just really expanding and there's so much more to learn, which brought me back to this is one of our favorite or our member favorite um, blooming branches or even flowers that we've made and i've learned so much more since i taught this class for the master class that i wanted to teach a, a little more elevated version we have some changes in tools and materials so even if you've made this before you're going to be able to learn something new in this class so I have a couple people, we have a little studio audience going on back here, <laughs> more or less. Anna and Emily are back here to answer all your questions. Um, may, I'm gonna have, Emily, will you tell them how to do that? How yes. to ask questions? So if you have any questions, go ahead and click the Q&A section or uh, question section and ask your question there. And if you're coming in from YouTube and you wanna interact with us, go ahead and follow the link in the description. All right, we wanna hear your questions. That's the really fun thing about doing a live is that we can get your questions and comments in real time and answer them right here. So it's almost like you're here crafting with me, right? So today, this is my updated version. You can see it looks pretty much the same, but I have made a few changes. Um, and also for this particular one that I wanted to photograph, I made it from this big, huge gnarly branch that we found outside. We had these huge windstorms here in Portland. You guys may have too, I hear it went, all the way across the country and found these beautiful branches. Uh, for today, I'm actually going to use a much smaller branch. I have one here. I've wired it because it's actually still green and I wanted to give it some time to dry with the branches closer together. I'll take this off before we start. So if there aren't any questions, I will get started with the tools and materials. All right, so if you've gone in and you've printed out your, your template and you've looked at the posts that we provided for you, um, you'll see that we do have the tools and materials list there, but I'll go ahead and go over them so it makes it really easy for everybody. So for crepe paper, I am using the blush for the petals. So this is all extra fine. Everything I'm doing here today is extra fine. If you're using your own crepe paper and you want to make this and you have a heavier crepe paper, I would say just stretch your crepe paper before you cut it. I'm also using the vanilla, actually the chiffon for the centers here. You can also use vanilla. I think I may have, well, I'm not sure. Vanilla or chiffon, either work. And then here I have the cherry for the sepals and the wraps, and you can also use ruby. And then for the leaves, I have the cypress. And this takes very little crepe paper. So this is a perfect project to make with even your crepe paper scraps that you have left over. So there's the template. The other materials, I'll be using a 24 gauge wire. For color, oh wait, I have an eight millimeter ball for my buds. For color, I'll be using a black marker. I have a Posca, but literally you can use you know, even a Sharpie or any type of black marker. You don't need anything fancy for that. And to add some color to kind of blend in, I'm using the Permanent Red Pan Pastel. And again, this is an option, you don't have to use it, uh, but it does add a bit, bit of color inside the flowers here. Can we see that? Do a little close up there. You can see how there's some color variation. All right, and then I have um, this blending brush, which we absolutely are loving, and you'll see why. I have my art glitter glue. I do like to use white glue for this. You can use a different type of white glue, but this is my preference. And then for tools, um, you can cut either on a cutting machine or you can use your scissors, either one. This does cut beautifully on a cutting machine. I have my detail scissors for fringe. I have the pinking shears, which are the scallops for the edge. You, this is totally optional. I also have my wire cutters, my curling tool, my fringe clip, my hot glue gun, and we'll need that at the end. And then I, I grabbed a pair of these um, 
garden cutters just to cut my stem down of my of my branch i really do suggest you find stems on the ground you don't need to go cut them there's usually plenty that just fall off and then the last thing i have are my needle nose tweezers so there we go any questions i'm going to slide these into my little container any questions out there uh, we do have a question from christine lake is there a blending brush a repurposed toothbrush um i think that the toothbrushes might be a little too firm, although if you find a soft tooth toothbrush, you can try. You can see how this blending brush is more curved, even on the edges where toothbrushes are often very flat, but give it a try and see if it works. This has a very fine um, bristle on it. And, oh, uh, the last thing I, I did wanna mention that all of these tools and materials, all of them, every single one, except for the branch, you can find in our shop at feltpaperscissors.com. Um, and of course, I always, I always encourage people to use what you have. All right, I'm gonna make sure my hot glue gun is on. Any other questions right now? Not yet, but just okay. to clarify, uh, that blending brush is part of a, a set of blending brushes that we have available oh, yes. in our shop. Mm -hmm. And they are usually intended for makeup, but we have been using them for, for our pan pastel and absolutely love them. Yeah, you can use a makeup brush, although these are also, I think the ones that we have are they're also blending brushes for ink when you're doing card making. So they're used for crafting and for, for makeup. They're all very similar. So again, use what you can find. Um, let me move these things aside because I have already cut out my crepe paper. And I've also made most of the flowers. I didn't want to sit here for a couple hours making these with you guys. So I prepped and made quite a few ahead of time. And you can see this is another little trick that I like to do. I love this cake round where I can put my wires and let everything dry. Okay, so branch will come last. And here I have everything cut out. And the first thing that I want to do, I'm gonna let that cool. Yes, I can move that. Is take one of my wires and we want to glue in my, there we are. Let's see, so for your stems, you'll wanna cut your wires, I would say about three inches. You can go three to four inches. If you cut them longer, you'll, you'll probably want to cut them off. One of the issues that I had with this larger branch that I made is I realized that I had a lot more of the red wire than I wanted, so I had to get a little creative. So I suggest you start with a three or four inch wire. You can use your white glue or you can use your hot glue. I'll take my bud and for a small branch, I suggest you put on three buds. For a larger branch, you can maybe do as many as five or eight, depending, you know, just add as many that look good. All right, so I've just added some glue. I'm gonna set that aside to dry and um, keep my glue fresh with the pin. Then I'm going to, let's see, let's do this one first. I'm going to take my two pieces, I have two left, but if you're making a small branch, I would suggest you do at least seven flowers. So this one here has seven blooms, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and four of them are open blooms and three of them are actually a bit more closed, and I'll show you the difference in that. And then if you're making, I have rice in here, there we go, now it's staying. Um, if you're making a larger branch, I, I doubled that, so I did 14 blooms on this larger branch. So just, you know, work, work with it and see what looks best with the size of branch that you have. Now this is an option. I have my pinking shears that are scalloped and I go ahead and clip those on the end just to give it some texture. And then I'll take my fringe tool and I have these stacked in two. You can do more than one at once. And this is probably one of the few times I actually use extra fine crepe paper for my stamen. Um, you could use a heavy crepe paper and that would be great. I just forgot a step. Hold on one second, back up. Okay, before you start fringing, but after you, you, um, after you do the pinking shears, go ahead and put that on your surface and we'll grab the black pin. And all I'm going to do is put little dots right at the edge. And I like them a, a bit more uneven and I don't want I don't want the line of black to be super thick. It needs to be pretty lightweight. So this will just add that extra detail at the end of your little your little stamen points. Any questions at this point? 
Not yet. I okay. think you're doing a great job <laughs> describing everything. <laughs> we I'm do totally... have a few new people tuning in, so we just want to welcome everybody. Yes. I know we have a lot of fun. This is kind of a new thing we started doing a few months ago is like we want to get out there more. Let's do some YouTube videos. All right, so I'm doing one layer at this point. Since I already started cutting, I don't want to mix those up. And the trick to this is you do want to make them as thin as possible. And I'm telling you, this clip really makes the difference. We sell these all, all of this in our shop at Felt Paper Scissors if you want to go check it out. And you can see there's my fringe. The other thing I like to do once I've cut it is I'll, I'll wet, well, I don't have anything to wet my fingers here, but you can just kind of roll them between your fingers. If you have a sponge, you can just kind of press your fingers on the sponge and then roll these between your fingers. And then you can take your needle nose tweezers and kind of break them up again so they're not compacted. And that gives a very nice, fine finish. It's, you know, again, it's about refinement. It's about adding that extra little bit. All right, and we'll do the same thing to this one. And go ahead and fringe. And when I'm working on flowers, what I usually do, I will do all of my fr center fringes at once. I will, I mean, not meaning all stacked, but I'll do everything, um, one bite at a time because I feel like when I work on something and I do it over and over again it really does help me uh, kind of step up a notch where my technique gets a little cleaner and stronger so I recommend doing that okay doing the same thing with this then the next thing we'll do and you can use hot glue for this but I I'm been preferring my white glue so I'll take another piece of wire about four inches each and use my glue and, well, actually I'll do it this way. I'll go ahead and do a bead of glue at the base of this fringe, of this stamen, and then I'm just gonna roll it onto the wire. The nice thing about this art glitter glue, which by the way, we do have it in our shop, but we're not shipping right now because it does not ship in the winter. We found this out. We were told by the manufacturer not to do it, and we found out the hard way. We cannot ship this in the winter. So come back in a few months and we'll have it for sale again. <laughs> so if you don't have this, go ahead and use like a, a Lean's glue. That will work as well. But just a very, very fine bead. You don't want too much glue on this crepe paper because it is so fine and thin, it will tend to somewhat um, disintegrate, melt. You don't want that to happen. Go ahead and call out any questions when you guys get them. <laughs> yeah. And then I'm pinching the at the base here to really tighten it up. You can see how that's making a beautiful flare with the stamen. And then I'm just setting that aside to dry. And I can put them right here into my foam. There we go. Actually, all three of them. All right. Then the next step that we'll do is I will take, for each flower, I need three of these petal pieces. And for each bud, I actually use half so I'll take six, that will be plenty. My pan pastel, and this is really fun. Once you start adding pan pastel to your crepe paper, you'll find out how it's something you'll wanna do with every flower you make. And I'm, I'm, what I'm doing is I'm patting the, the color right in the center and then brushing and blending it away from the center. And I only need to do that on one side of each. What color are you using? I am using the permanent red. I always have to look because their colors are kind of uh, different. <laughs> They're very art artistic. They're more of a fine artist um, color names because this is actually made for fine art. I love this color combination. You know, it's I, I went brighter this time. Last time I used a darker um, pan pastel and a darker red and I just loved almost that vibration that this hot uh, red will bring to this flower. It just looks, it makes it look alive. Okay, and there we go. That's just enough pan pastel. I'll put that away. And I gotta move some of my tools here. I'm done with this one. Let's 
see, I think I'm done with that one. Might need the wire cutters, but all right. So then the next step is to take each one of your pieces and I'm holding it so that the crepe paper is facing up or, or so the color's facing upward. And I'm going to curl the edge on both sides back by rolling the crepe paper along the curling tool. So I'm not really pulling it, I'm, I'm more like rolling it across to get this shape. And then I'll just do a little tiny bit of a stretch in the center and I'll do that for three of these petals. We do a, a bit of a different technique for um, the buds that are close, very, very slight difference. So I'll curl that a bit and then stretch the center so that it goes down so you can see how it's cupped down, but then the it's cupped and then and then the um, edges go outwards again. So almost more of an S shape. Let's curl three. And remember, if you're joining us on YouTube and you want to interact with our chat, you can follow the link below in the description. All right, so for the final three, so this is for the bud that's more open, and this will be the bud that is closed. So I'll show you an example here. So here's one that's more open and one that's more closed. So what I'll be doing with this one is we'll want the color on the outside, but we also want the tips to curl Inner. So we'll do the same thing where we're curling it with the color facing upward. But then before we stretch it, we'll flip it over and stretch it the other direction. So now we're, we're creating a cut form versus an S form on these petals. But we want the uh, color on the outside. Does that make sense? You can see how they like to curl and kind of create their own little shape, which I love. Okay. Let me turn it over and make that cup shape. Okay, so those are ready to go on. And we'll start with the more open petal. So what I'm going to do is take the petal, you can see how I have it my thumbs on top, my fingers on top. I'm just going to twist it, twist it at the base, and then I'm going to fold it back and press it down. I want my white glue here and kind of make a point there. Put a bit of glue onto the base, but before I, I do anything else, I'm going to take another one, do the same thing. So I'm just twisting it halfway, folding it, and laying one petal on top of the other but you can see how I'm splaying it out just a bit. Now I'm placing that petal, so I'm making kind of a row of petals here. Now the quince flower, as much as um, I would have loved it to have six petals, it only has five. So we'll go ahead and do the same thing where we twist it, but I'm going to use my scissors or you can even clip it, cut it in half, and then we'll glue that one in place so that they're all in a row. I found that this actually, I was able to line my my petals up a bit more. These are such small petals that you kind of want to have a bit of control. So I found that doing it this way where I glued the petals together first before I put them onto the stamen center actually worked better. All right, so there we are, you can see that. And then I'll add some glue to the base here just a little bit, you don't want too much to get it, you don't want it to be soggy. I'll lay my stamen in the center and then just sandwich that wire. And if you're really clever, you can actually make it into a rotation. So you tuck the first one under the, the last, so you have a complete perfect rotation. I'm gonna squeeze that at the base. You can see how it's nice and rotated. And then I'll let that dry. You do want to give it a bit of time to dry. Okay, so same thing. Here I'm going to rotate, but now my color's on the outside rather than on the inside, and it's making more of a cup. 
I like to put a bit of glue before I do the next one, that way it's ready. Put a bit of glue on the base. Just kind of pressing it down and lining it up. And then the same thing with the third, where I just want a half, so my fifth petal will be cut. I'm, I just went ahead and cut it first. I guess I could have twisted it, would have been a bit easier. And then add that to my petal stack. If you just kind of press it down really tight with your fingers at the base, that really does help it seal and stay in place. Then I'll add a very small bit of glue and then place this in the center. I'm kind of rotating one side and then rotating the other on top. I'm pinching it. So look how easy that is. That, that is a different technique. I feel like it's so much easier and you have better results in the end. All right, pinching it, making, it sure, making sure it's nice and sealed and then we're going to let that dry. Then we'll go ahead and use the last piece for the bud, and I want this center to be fairly stretched so that it can get all the way around this small eight millimeter ball. I'm going to just spin some glue, white glue, and I like to kind of use my finger to make sure the whole thing's covered. Are you using one of the halves of the Five yes, so I'm using the sixth of the, um, so the sixth, the last piece of that. And if you, do, I mean, you can cut extras. All right, so now I'm just, I'm placing it at the base here, and then I wanna make sure that, this is why I stretched it as much as possible so that it wraps all the way around the ball. I wanna pinch it and press it, and with that bit of glue that you have on the, uh, spun ball, it should lay down really nicely. Now I have a, a long tip. I'll just grab that and twist it. Use my fingernail to press it in. Then I'll take my scissors and just clip it at an angle so that it makes a cute little point. And there is my bud. Okay, any questions? Not yet. Okay, <laughs> all right. So now I'm going to cover all of my wires, well, I'm gonna start with this one, um, with this cherry crepe. And usually, you know, this is very different for us. We usually do it in green, so, but when you look at those quince branches, they have a bit more color. And that's why I just really love this flower. It's such a fun change up. Yeah, it is. So I just added a bit of glue to the strip, and you'll note, and this is really important, when you cut these strips, they have to be against the grain. So let's take a look here. Which camera do you guys want? This one. Okay, so you can see the grain is going the short direction and the reason is when we, when we wrap it around, we want it to stretch. So you can see that stretching. Very, very important. You can stretch it ahead of time if you want to, but it just gives a really nice smooth finish. Okay, so I started the top. I'm going to run a bead of glue down my wire. And I just use my metal tip to kind of spread it because you really don't want too much. This glue a little goes a long way. And then I'll rotate it and then pull it as I rotate uh, very, very gently just to stretch the crepe. How are we doing with questions? No questions yet, but people are loving how this is looking. <laughs> you can see how I'm rotating it at a, a really high angle. So I'm moving down the stem very, very quickly. So I'm not overlapping the crepe paper very much at all. And I think that's important because you want this to stay as thin as possible. So there's my bud. And I'll add that over here with my other buds. And I might even trim that wire down just a bit. It seems more, a bit more than I'd prefer. And then these two flowers, anything that has the, the stamen, we are also putting on the sepal. So very simple, we have a, a sepal with three scallops. I'll be adding just a very, very slight line of glue at the base. And what I'll do on this one is you'll want to make sure that it lines up right underneath your petals 
And the thing is, is that you can get a full wrap around the flower, around the petals, and then you'll want to pinch the base. So it's almost like you're gathering it so that you get the full wrap around. So you can see here, it's, it's pretty simple to do. You just have to kind of be thoughtful as you place it onto the, onto the stem. Okay, that looks good. And then we'll do my half bloomed flower here. The other thing about, you know, when you're making this branch is um, you can be very calm about things not looking exactly the same because it's, it, it's a, it gives you a lot of room. It's going to be beautiful. If some of your flowers look different, if some of your petals aren't quite as lined up as others, it's okay. It's going to look really, really beautiful and it probably will look very natural if it's not perfect. Okay, then I'll go ahead and finish this with the stem the stem wrap. I also think this, this is a great way to recycle nature, you know, find those branches that have fallen. And I really love the blooming branch look in my home, but they only last a very, very short time if you cut them off the tree. And, you know, pretty soon you'll have petals on your tabletop where this will last all year round. And it's a little piece of artwork. Same thing, just go ahead and wrap the stems. Again, you can see the angle that I'm pulling. It's really, you know, not, not overlapping very much. And I just kind of spin it between my fingers to compress it at the end. And I'll do the last one here. And I, I usually use all my little tiny bits and scraps. I, I save those for the bud often. So nothing is wasted. Would you say that this updated version is easier to do than the older one? Uh, you know, I do. I think it's easier because you there's less room for error, especially when you're placing your petals. There's a bit more detail, you know, in how I, I did it. I didn't change the template at all. It's exactly the same template, but I also changed some of the materials um, or the tools, you know, like the fringe tool is something new for us. And then I changed out a few colors. Okay, so there's the last one. So for these two, we'll want to open them up a bit and I'm gonna use my needle nose tweezers and I'll just find a petal and just kind of start using my tweezers and then using my fingers to pull it out. It's when I was making these, I thought, hmm, this has a similar vibe to, you know, a plumeria or a hibiscus where it has that five petal rotation, which is really pretty. You can see here is a more bloomed version and that one's done. And then this one here, I just want to open it up just a bit. Again, I like having some variety of some, some more open than the others. I'll show you this, I'll show you the face close up here. So you can see that one is fairly closed. Okay. All right, here are all of the final flowers that we're going to add onto our branch. So move this over here and for this we're going to use the hot glue gun uh, when I did this the last time I actually wrapped uh, the wires with floral tape and the floral tape didn't really match so it, it had this awkward change so this time I'm just gluing them straight on I'm taking my wires off because I think yeah there we go it's been sitting for a couple days this one was very splayed out and this branch I'm gonna look at it here for a second oh sorry Mike <laughs> all right so this branch, I feel like some of these are a bit longer than I prefer. So I like finding branches that have at least three arms and I do wanna leave this lower one. But this one to me seems higher than I prefer. I just don't want quite that height. Then I want to bring this one down a bit so that there's some variation, so they're not the same height. And I think that looks pretty good. So let's go for this. 
All right, to answer your question, Colleen, yes, this video will be available for viewing after. Yes, this will be available on YouTube. So the next thing that I want to do is, I do wanna shorten some of these. So I'm gonna go ahead and go in here and clip off some of the stems so they're not quite as long and I'll tell exactly how long they are. They're about two and a half inches total from tip to end. I don't need this anymore. And what I want to do next is sort of lay them in order of how, you know, this, is, this one is the least open. So I'll put that next to the buds and then here's the next one. So I'm putting them in order of how much they are bloomed. And some of these are very similar. And the reason is I'll put the more, the more of the buds at the point of each of the stems and then I'll work down to larger blooms as I go down. Okay, these look pretty good. And we'll start with a bud. So what I'll do is I'm going to put at least an inch of glue right on the stem of this bud. Can you guys see me? Am I, I'm kind of leaning in here since I have this branch in my lap. And I'll place that right along the stem. You might need to put some, um, you know, oven mitts on. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I just have fingers of steel, so I can use hot glue and pinch it all at once. You might want to use your, um, your pliers like this. You can hold it on in place so that you're not having to touch the glue. And then we'll go in and we'll cover up a bit of that red and we'll do a nice transition with some leaves. But for now, let's go ahead and just get all the buds on. So you gotta work fast because this does cool rather quickly. So I'm going to place a bud on all three of my main points. The other difference between this, this version and the last version is the last version I pre-filmed. This one we're doing live, which is always a little bit scary. Okay, there's the buds. Now I'll start with the three of the next size that are they're more closed, and I'll place those, I'll place one on each branch a bit further down, and you know, you just kind of eyeball it, what looks good to you. And we will be uh, finishing, finishing these up with the leaves to give them a more refined look so it doesn't look like you just glued wire onto, <laughs> onto stems. It's already looking great. I know, it's so pretty. You really can't go wrong with this. And what a great gift too, if you have someone who needs a little cheer up this time of year, give them a, a blooming branch, a little art piece that you made. It's a lovely idea, I feel, especially this time of the year after the holidays, but before the yeah, nice weather right. comes, at least in this part of the country. Yeah. You need anything to cheer us up. And this is a perfect replacement for the Christmas decorations, you know? So on these I'm placing, I have four. So I'm just gonna place them where my eye says it, it might want some. You can see how I'm kind of, uh, I'm, I'm spacing them out visually. So if I see, like right here, I feel like there's a big hole, so I might wanna put one there. On this branch. But again, try to make it look as natural as possible. As much as you can, gluing paper <laughs> to sticks. Mm. Oop, I got myself tangled here. I'll place this one on this wire. And really, this is, I, I just I kind of make this up as I go. I just, there's no real recipe other than, you know, use your sensibility to decide where you need another flower. I have one left and I'm feeling like this would be a good spot right there. And you'll notice that um, we, we do have hot glue. The gift of hot glue is you're going to have hot glue strings floating around. Um, hello dog. <laughs> That's Jake. You might see Jake in some of our social lately. 
Okay, so there's all the flowers and look how beautiful that looks. It's just, you know, there's not a lot on it, but it's just so delicate and pretty. I'm using my fingers to move the buds and the flowers out away from the uh, branches themselves so that now I'm going to go in and fill it up with leaves. Okay, we have a couple of questions. Okay. Um, pretty small. Uh, Christine is wondering if um, setting the hot glue gun down on the mat it causes any issues. It doesn't. <laughs> usually the tip isn't touching, so no. it's, mm -hmm. it's usually okay. Probably wouldn't leave it on there for a couple of hours. Well, you know, there are times when we accidentally forget to turn off our hot glue guns, and that's not a good thing. But I haven't found that it melts the mat, and there is a little kickstand that goes with this, which has popped off. So, But, you know, you can also find something that's a non-burnable surface. I don't think we've ever burned our, our mats, though. No. Um... And then Twyla was wondering if you had any suggestions on how to modify this for a cherry branch. Um, I would go to our site and look for cherry. I don't know if we have any recent cherries, but uh, the other thing you can do is just go online and, and Google cherry and see what colors they would be and how many petals they would use. And you could probably use the, the same template. Just, I think there are five petals as well. Are they? So okay. It's pretty similar. Yeah, it might just vary with color. Um, you may not use the red, you might use a, a green. I know that we have done some chairs. Okay, I gotta tell you guys what I'm doing here. So I'm taking my little leaves and you can see they're, they're a bit uh, square on the bottom, which I could have changed that, I could have made them pointed, but I'm, I'm pinching them to kind of gather them and then adding a dot of glue. Then I'm going around and every single area where I have added that stem, I'm covering the base. Okay, keep going, Emily. <laughs> uh, Christine was also wondering if you try to match the blooms with the nodes on the branch. Um, so I don't. The reason is I'm letting the nodes be themselves. However, I am going to add leaves into the nodes. I let the nodes be kind of part of the story rather than covering, covering them up with blooms. So, you know, we'll pretend like this was a node. We're working with what we have. I think, you know, one of the reasons why I loved this one so much is because there was so much to wear. I mean, there's moss on this branch. It's so much fun. I put a lot of leaves on this too, partly to cover up so much wire that I added on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then are you using a high or low temperature hot glue gun? I'm using high just because I really like the point on this hot glue gun. And the, unfortunately, the low temperature does not come with this really fine point. There we go. See that? Um, this one's been, it probably was left on. That's why it's black. It's usually silver. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we need a, a timer. We need a, you know, so it'll automatically turn off. That would be really ideal for our studio. You can, use, you can use low temperature too. I just really like the point. You could probably use, for the leaves, you could probably use the white glue as well. I think, you know, adding the stems onto the wire, the hot glue is a good method, but for the leaves, you could, you could use a white glue. Now, I'm, I'm putting glue on the base and placing it onto, can you guys see me? I'm kind of all over the table here. And then I'm pinching the base. That's another option to give it the shape. You can also kind of press it into the wood. And you can add as many or as few leaves as you like. I personally like more. And I also go in, you know, just like we were talking about and put them, putting them into the nodes to add a bit of texture. And you just want to make it look as natural as possible. And that is it. This is it. This is this is how we're going to finish this. Right now is a great time for questions as I'm adding all of my leaves. Christine was just commenting on how uh, strong your fingers must be with that high temperature <laughs> hot glue gun. Oh and yeah. <laughs> I know I'm the same way. I don't like to use the high temperature with my fingers. But yeah. Well, years of making flowers. I know. Well, you know where it all started, right, Emily? Oh, you I remember? do. Yes, I do. Back in, how many years ago? 10 um, years ago? 12, no, I 15? Been, I was like 11 at the time, so. Yeah, 11. Um, <laughs> I used to make um, full paper gowns, like paper dresses, 
and they were gowns. They were huge. And, uh, a lot of hot glue. A lot of hot glue. <laughs> yep. So I think that's, I remember back in the, those days where um, I was wearing bandages on my fingers because of all the blue, glue, glue gun burns. <laughs> so maybe that's what made them fingers of steel. Okay, I'm having trouble with all my, ah, I'm going to switch over. I'm going to see what it work, if this works just as well. Because I do love my white glue nowadays. <laughs> okay, I'm going to just sort of add some more leaves into the nodes. Then I, again, the nice thing about this um, art glitter glue is it dries so hard. It, it really works almost better than a uh, hot glue on a lot of things. I like to add uh, a leaf onto any broken points of the branch so that it kind of covers that break and gives it a better finish. And really, this is it. I'm just finishing adding leaves. There's no more to it. Um, I'll show you one little tip though. So I might add more to this, but I'm going to stop because we're getting close to the end of our lesson. But one of the things that I like to do, and you can see it on both of these, uh, to, if I'm placing a branch in a vase, I like it to stand up a certain way. So I fill it with rice. You can also use those um, those stuffy fillers that are made out of pellets, but I like the rice because it has a heavier weight to it. So you can see how I can place it into the vase and then turn it in the direction that I want it and it won't be tipping over. And that's the same with this one too. Kind of have to press it in really tightly. But look how nice that looks. Right? Gorgeous. Yeah, all right. So there we go. Now I'm gonna challenge you guys to go out and make yourself a blooming branch. Find some pretty branches on the side of the road or out when you're out walking around in the park with your dog and bring them home and create something beautiful. So this video, for those of you who are watching live, will be available for you to watch again. And if you're watching on YouTube or even if you're not, pop over and give us a like and follow us so that you know when we have all of our new videos every month. We're now uh, posting something every Friday so you'll want to know them when they're up because they are so much fun as fun as this one right <laughs> so fun all right any last minute questions no we but we do want to remind people if you are not a member but you want to learn more about clay paper flower making mm -hmm. we are currently offering a master class uh, yes and we have shared the link in the feed yes and here's what we made in the master class um, right now the master class is um, closed, we'll be opening it again, um, but we do have a lot of really beautiful projects on our site, so come pop over and see us at leahgriffith.com. All right, we will see you guys next month.